um, the United States and, and Iran have, have played this sort of courtly game with each other where the Iranians try to twist the American tail, but they, don't, they know they do not want, they've never wanted a more general regional war because they would lose it. Uh, we'll talk about the piece that you've written for the Sunday Times in a moment because it is a really interesting look at the relationship between Iran and the United States. But I'm interested, first of all, to get your response to these third joint uh, strikes between the US and the UK on Houthi rebels in Yemen. I mean, presumably you were expecting further strikes. Yes, it was inevitable that um, the campaign against the Houthis um, own attacks on shipping would go on, whether they'll be successful or not. They do seem to have, to have had a sort of containment role because the Houthis have not launched uh, the sort of attacks that they might have and they would have liked to. So I would have expected that to go on. Um, it's interesting that, that, that Britain is having, having not very much to do with attacks um, in Iraq and Syria, this uh, the campaign of the United States against Iran directly, the thing that started uh, a couple of nights ago. So, you know, Britain is in for the uh, joint campaign against Houthi closing, the Houthis closing the Red Sea, but not uh, sharing the, the broader campaign at the moment anyway uh, against Iranian-inspired attacks against American forces. Do you think the US strategy is right at the moment? I'm not sure there's anything else they can do. Um, certainly in terms of the Houthis, they, you know, you can't allow a group like the Houthis simply to hold the world economy to ransom for the next two or three years, which is what they would do if, if no action was taken. Um, and, uh, you know, in the, the action that the United States is taking against Iranian proxies in Iraq and Syria, again, they're responding to the fact that they've been attacked more than 170 times now since the 7th of October. And they, they, have, they feel as if they have to do something. There's no scope for negotiation in this, although negotiations are going on all the time. We can't only rely on negotiation because the Iranians simply say these attacks have nothing to do with us. They're all to do with Gaza. We would have no control over these groups. And the Americans say, look, that isn't true. We know that's not true. Don't try and tell us it's, it's true. Um, and so they, they feel, I think, that they have no... Uh, no alternative. I mean, Biden certainly doesn't want to do this. I mean, Biden needs this crisis in an, in an election year like a hole in the head. But he has almost no other alternatives at the moment other than to try military pressure and then go back to diplomacy. Um, so it's, it's a mix. It's not as if he's not being diplomatic, but he needs some sort of military pressure to convince the Iranians that this will only get worse for them unless they rein in the people who are attacking American forces. We keep being told this isn't an escalation, but obviously we've now seen strikes in Iraq, in Syria, in Yemen. Obviously, there's uh, the you know the challenges of the war in Gaza at the moment and the implications of that. Do you see what's happening at the moment in the region as an escalation? It's potentially all all an escalation because the region is slipping towards a more general conflict. That doesn't mean to say it's definitely going to happen, but it's on that road. On the other hand, what the Americans are trying to do is to um, restrict their attacks to very specific targets, but lots of them. It's, it's timed its attacks so that it causes minimum loss of life, I think, so far. And it's obviously not going to target inside Iran at the moment. I mean, it might choose to target Iranian um, naval uh, assets because the, the, the Iranian Navy is at sea. I mean, giving giving information to the Houthis for their attacks on the Red Sea, so that it is possible that the the Americans could attack directly Iranian ships, for instance, without without actually attacking inside Iran. That would be another big step. But the Americans are trying to make it clear that they are attacking militias who are attacking them, and so they're doing quite a lot to to indicate that this is a response, but not a response that is in some way uncontrolled. And so far, that they've 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 it made it clear that they can attack more or less anywhere in the region, but they're choosing to attack only the militias and only the facilities of the militias. They're not going for personnel as such. They're trying to destroy the radars, the um, the fixed sites, the storage sites. They're trying to hurt the militias as an indication that this will get worse if you don't think again. Mm. You've written in the Sunday Times today the, the history between Iran and US over the years. Just remind us about the tensions that have been going on for well over four decades. Yes, I mean, it, it, and it even goes back to the, you know, to the earlier crises whereby the, the Western world, Britain and America, America primarily, but Britain alongside it, installed the Shah of Iran 
uh, in Iran. I mean, even you know, 20 odd years before the Iranian Revolution. But the revolution of 1979 began as extraordinarily anti-American, anti-Shah, anti-American. Um, and at the very beginning, the, um, the Iranian students took 52 hostages um, in the American embassy and held them. That was in the, uh, in the presidency of Jimmy Carter. And Carter tried a rescue mission, the famous Desert One mission uh, of 1980, which went terribly, terribly wrong. And that whole thing was a, was a fiasco. And that Carter always felt cost in the election. And from then on, um, the United States and, and Iran have, have played this sort of courtly game with each other where the Iranians try to twist the American tail, but they, don't, they know they do not want, they've never wanted a more general regional war because they would lose it if they ever went into a regional war. They almost uh, came to grief in the Iraq-Iran war, which is not to do with the, the United States, but the Iranians um, were defending themselves against Saddam Hussein, who attacked them. Um, just a few months after, within a year of the Iranian Revolution of 1979, but 1980, he launched an attack on Iran, much smaller country, of course, Iraq. But that war killed over 800, almost 900,000 people over a course of eight years. And that shocked the Iranian regime. And they've always been wary of general war uh, because of that. But equally, they can't resist the idea that they can, uh, as it were, tweak America's tail. They can fight a war... Uh, a, a sort of guerrilla terrorist war across the region in order to develop their own influence. And it also suits to some extent, doesn't it, Iran, to, to have the, the, the Americans to, to, to criticise, to say that they hate us because it distracts from the real problems that Iran has at home with a population who are at, at times, and it has been quashed to some extent, but at times rising up against them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the Iranian regime is very narrowly based now. It's, it's a theocratic dictatorship. It's very ruthless. <clears throat> I, I mean, you know, one of the phrases I always have for it is that it is, a, it, is a, it is a security service that has a government working for it rather than a government that has a security service working for it. It's driven by its security forces and by its army. Um, and uh, as I think I'll point out in the article, you know, four million Iranians live outside Iran and half of those four million live in North America. I mean, people in Iran, young people in Iran, so many of them have links into family and friends who live in the United States. And the influence of, of uh, Western liberalism can't be suppressed amongst a very young and well-educated, very sophisticated young population. So the Iranians have got the, a, a real problem. The Iranian regime has got a problem. And yet every Friday at prayers, they chant death to America every Friday. And so they have to maintain America as the great Satan in order to justify um, so many of their own policies. And, of course, everything that goes wrong for them domestically, um, because Iran is a rich country in, intrinsically, but they don't run it very well and they don't organize it very well. And so everything that goes wrong, they blame on the outside world. They blame it on America. They blame it on sanctions. So America is, a, is an intrinsic part of them um, staying in power, the fact that they can blame the United States because it's the great Satan. And, of course, behind the great Satan is the little Satan, who is Britain. They also believe, partly because of the history of the 1950s, that somehow Britain is behind so many things that go on, go on in the world because somehow we tell the Americans what to do and the Americans do it. Gosh, if that was only a little bit true. Absolutely. Uh, Michael Clark, it's always good to speak to you. Thank you for your time. He is Professor of Defence Studies at King's College London. He's written an analysis piece for the Sunday Times. You can find it in the World section online now or in the app.